A warm welcome to my craft room, my friends, in 2019. I'm going to use the Christina Griffiths beautiful box and die 5x7 set. And I just adore anything that Christina Griffiths puts out there. There's the number of the set. It is a UK ordered set, but I didn't care. I just love it. <laughs> I'm waiting for the 8x8 box set. It'd be fantastic. And I want to thank you, Christina, for uh, having the goal and the vision to put out your own products. That's fabulous. And if you don't know Christina Griffiths, it is card making magic. So here I am. I am putting the box die. You want to put it facing up with your card stock down if you're using the Gemini. We all know that. I always double check it. <laughs> you can see me there. It's just like, oh boy, I've cut enough mats to know that I better take a double check. So I cut out. You're going to need one, two of these actually. And then one of them you're going to use to cut out with one of your uh, dies to make a nice cover page. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just taking the purple tape off and I'm thinking to myself, now I could leave it just like that and see how you get that gorgeous. I think it's six and three quarters by four and three quarters with the stitched edge. But then you have a five by seven edge die. Be very careful if you're using this. A knife when you have your cut uh, your magnet plate right there I was very careful but um, here you go and the one thing about the die that cuts out the card it's only cuts on three sides the upper portion does not have a perforated edge so you're getting a perfect size five by seven card I think that's wonderful it is great to be back in the craft room my friends thank you for your patience I had to take it easy there for the month of January here and just recoup from being ill in December, November, December actually. So I can't wait to get going on some tutorials and I'm super excited to share this one with you. I cut out, yeah, I'm saying, wait a minute, I cut out so many die cuts, it was crazy. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you all like the companies that I used of their dies and they have matching stamps as well I know you've seen this one but I want to show you how you can get a perfect stamped image if you keep your dies together like this you don't cut them apart so some of the smaller sets uh, I do that and I'll show you on the next tutorial so I'll keep this page I'll set it aside and uh, I'll just give you a little bit of inspiration to uh, get a nice stamped image, image from your um, cardstock when you die cut. So I chose this Spellbinder die and I think it's only fitting. I thought it would be very nice. It's 5 by 7 by Spellbinders and I am shopping in my stash for three months. I am not shopping in any stores. I am going to shop my stash again. I did it a couple of years ago for a full year and I was able to do it. And I decided that that's what I'm going to do starting the new year, is three months in my own stash. Just grab a little container and shop in my stash. My own room. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I cut some white pieces out of here, just on the sideline. I cut some black card stock on the sideline. I'm going to keep all my pieces parts, if I didn't say that, in a cup. And now, with my 5x7 card, I need to make it longer. I need to have a half inch gusset plus two extra lines there. So I will come in and put two lines, the first two lines, I'll leave a half an inch and then I'll put two more lines for the bend in the card because I know I'm going to have a shaker, fancy that, right? <laughs> On the inside of this card, it's gonna be a four-sided card. That's why the time is so, you know, that's why the video is so long. And I'm also going to decorate the front and the back of the actual box. And you are going, if you get this particular uh, set, now Christina has put in the actual die for the center. I missed out on that, Christina. 
<laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. I have plenty of 5 by 7 dies. And I love the one that I used. And here I am just making the base of my card like you all know I do. I like to have a heavy, heavy card to build the base on. Because as I'm creating, I'm basically... Uh, looking at my stash and thinking, okay, let's do this, let's do that. And if you follow my channel, you know that's how I create. I have lots of things going on around me, and I can change up at any time. <laughs> yeah, I can pull a 390. Now, here's the 3D vignette die. I got this from my friend Debbie. Hey, Debbie, thank you so much, and I love it. Now, if you set out to do a vignette card like this, you need to cut out, yeah, I'm just getting my um, my pinchy snips there, and I'm going to separate these. There is a reason. And I love the center of this. It looks like toast. I'm going to use it as um, a nice big piece of toast <laughs> on a card. <laughs> yeah. Let's specify that. And be very careful if you're cutting all those little bitsy parts out. So if you're using a 3D vignette card uh, die, you're going to need six of the fancy parts there. And you're going to need, um, well, let's just keep going. You only need uh, two of the ones with the slits in them. And uh, yeah, I cut out so many, you wouldn't believe it because I'm going to put them away. I don't want to have to go through this again. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at my iPad. I must be hitting it with my hand there. It's going like crazy. Uh, so there we go. I'm just cutting this out. And I'm sure I'm going to leave up uh, a video that shows the 3D vignette card by Amazing Paper Grace. And she has an easy, easy tutorial for putting this together. It's easier than what I'm doing. Because <laughs> hers is short. Mine is prolonged over time yes so I'll leave that in the description box and I'm going to use some press and seal here on top of one of my sponge mats right yes because I have a lot of little pieces parts that I'm cutting out the sentiment I'm doing the word blessing and it has blessed and it has uh, blesses there's just yeah I think there's three different parts so I'm just taping this down because as you know with the press and seal, it will stick anything. You could pretty well turn it upside down. Uh, I'm just taping it. Yeah, no method to my madness. I'm just taping it so I have something so it's not sliding off my glass mat. And I have to keep getting up. Hey, I got a new chair. I got a beautiful new chair for my back. It, it has wheels on it and it's comfy. And I wish I had have gotten this chair a long time ago. It really has helped uh, when you sit a long time. I was, I have an island and I was using an island chair that didn't have wheels so it's up and down, up and down. <laughs> so this is nice. I just wheel myself around my craft room. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I just wheel myself out and then I get up. But uh, that that's an idea, isn't it? <laughs> just wheel myself around my room. So here we go. I'm taking the guts out of the vignette die. It is so crazy pretty. When I got this from Debbie, I tell you what, I couldn't believe it. I love this. And you want to put the outside and the inside. You want to use all three of these die pieces. And like I said, you need six of them. And two of them, you're going to cut those little tabs off. And we will see that. Yeah. And I'm just putting that on there so it'll stay. Yeah, I'm going to the vagabond now. I don't need a lot of room. <laughs> I'm wheeling my chair out right now. I'll tell you what I'm doing to get a larger piece of white card stuff. There you go. I just flung it on my desk and I'm going to cut it out. Woohoo, it's late right now. It's almost 9 p.m. So, uh, yeah, this was a 35, I told you, hour video that I had to get down to a reasonable time and this is my reasonable time from 35 hours yes I had to take out as much as I could and still leave it so it wasn't in fast mode all the time you know so I'm going to zoom in isn't that a pretty pattern on this it really is now because I'm shopping in my stash that means I want to use a lot of product in my stash 
So I took off the cap of my Nouveau glue. I spit some out on my glass mat, spraying it with some water. Then I'm going to get my Tim Holtz flicky thing and I'm going to flick some, uh, you know, you want this to be really runny. I ran and got a box and I put a piece of paper on the bottom of the box. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. But I wanted to set four of them in there, I think. Yes. Uh, just where am I going to go, I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, without things flying all over the floor. So I turned around in my chair, my wheelchair, I'll call it. I turned around and I grabbed a piece of paper from behind me and I'm setting it down four. And I'm going to flick this glue onto here so that I can use my gold, right? I have to get gold. I try to get gold in all my tutorials. Just even if it's a tiny gold heart, I try to incorporate a little bit of gold into whatever project I'm doing. So here I am splattering it all over because I'm going to use the Mona Lisa. You get this at Michael's, any box store. Um, it is the Speedball Simple Leaf, gold leaf sheets. You get 18 of them, five by five inches. They're beautiful. And like I said, I'm shopping in my own stash. So I saw that and I thought, yes, I'm going to incorporate that. And yes, I did get my chair at Christmas. <laughs> I didn't get it just yesterday. Yes, I ordered it at Christmas time. So here we go. Um, we're going to dry them up a bit. You do want the glue to be somewhat sticky. I didn't want it uh, to be totally dry. Here's that Mona Lisa gold sheets. You can see I've used them before. They're beautiful and easy to handle. Very easy to handle. They don't get away from you like the flakes do. And you have the cover there and you just have to rub it. I took that uh, Tim Holtz brush because the bristles are kind of stiff and I kind of pounded it into the cardstock there. Because I, because, not cause Carol, because I wanted to, yeah, and then I thought I'd try this, I would heat it onto there. <laughs> yeah, uh, is it working? I'm saying to myself. So I'm activating the glue Oh yeah, you can tell it took me a month to do this, can't you? It's like I'm experimenting with everything. But you know what? It did work. It did work. It just had to get a little bit sticky. So here I thought, okay, let's put a little bit of Versamark with that and rub it with my hands. Oh yes, I have the patience patience of Job. So, uh, well, I, I don't have that much patience, but when I'm crafting, I try to be patient. So now I'm using my muscles, <laughs> I'm just ramming it in there and I'm taking the Tim Holtz brush, you know, this flicky brush thing, and it's kind of stiff and I'm just trying to get it out of the holes. I do want you to be able to see the pattern in the paper and yeah, now it's stuck because <laughs> I used the glue. You know I don't like to edit my, or do voiceovers at night, don't you? Yeah, because I'm tired and I never know if I'm just going to break out into laughter or, you know, uh, fall asleep. <laughs> you never know at my age, right? Yeah, so pick it all up there. And look how sweet it's raining gold. Oh, yeah, look at it. I love it. And I didn't do every one. I wanted to, I did two uh, on the, you need six of them, but only four of them. Let me see. I have it right here. Let me just see how many pages. One, two, three, four, six of them. Pardon me. So I did uh, three with the gold on it. Oh my. I did two with the gold on it. I had to look at it here. I did two because I didn't want it to, uh, you know, be too shy, you know, too overwhelming with the gold. I just wanted it to see it on every other kind of. Uh, so I'm, anyway, let's move on, right? Who cares about that? <laughs> let's move on. So I took the Molotow, and this is wonderful too. I took my brush, and I squirt some out there. I'm taking the Tim Holtz Flicky Brush, and I'm going to flick this masking fluid all over the card because we are going to do some uh, background skies. I am going to need uh, two of them two of them and I wanted to do them different and I wanted to show you a real easy way to get either stars or snow 
uh, rain. It could be just about anything when you use the Molotow liquid like this. It dries almost instantly. You could take your heat tool to it and it rubs off because you've only got these, you know, micro dots all over. But look at them all. And I'm going to use my wonderful oxide inks. I love my oxide inks. And I will share the colors I use as I'm going because of it being such a long tutorial. I didn't want to, I didn't have time to put all the names up. But uh, here I, I know I used about four blues. And one of them was peacock feathers. But I don't know if this is actually the peacock feathers. But let's say it is. Let's say it's the peacock feathers. It's a light blue. Just take a light blue and you can see how I work it off my mat and I go very lightly. This, I would rather do 422 layers lightly and get a nice even blend than to have a heavy hand, which I do, and have those circles showing. So I tried, oh, if I had it just caught that. Oh, I just should stop it. Just a minute, because I know that's not peacock feathers. Just a second. I'm back. It's tumble glass. <laughs> I stopped the video. I went back. Oh, there's nothing worse, right? When you're watching a tutorial and you're going, what color is that? It's tumble glass. So I'm going around with that. And then I'm doing the smoky thing, that smoky sky or uh, the, the Tim Holtz smoke something. And I'm using that. I should just look over because I have most of my inks out all in front of me and see what that smoky slate is it I can't remember but anyway gray slate it's the gray one and I put that as an uh, a base Ooh, I'm even getting out my uh, newest ones I think that one is the blueprint sketch if I'm right just take a lot of blues now here's what I did in the center I put a little bit of white almost to look like a distant cloud and then I moved it with a baby wipe so it was a little bit moist. And you'll see why as I keep going. Like, your sky is not perfect when you look out there. And see those little dots? They're still there. I rubbed a little bit on the right-hand side. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I'm going to add some uh, scattered straw onto the center right over the white. And I'm going to move back and forth when I do this. And I push out the lighter colors. Like, pushing it out like an explosion happened because you're going to add so much color and you know this is the black soot. That's one of the colors I have down. <laughs> and they say black isn't a color, but I don't know. I always call it a color. So my black soot is going on. Light, light hand. And I am going to push that towards the center. But you can see I have this like really set really high speed. So you can tell how slow I'm going to try and get an even blend. And then I'll take it from the edges and I'll push it in because I am using a light hand. So, um, yeah, I, you're really free from a lot of mistakes if you use a, lot, a light hand because you can go over it. So I'm going to make sure that I go all the way around. I love the way if you put some white down in the center and a little bit of the yellow or pink. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get that snow. You're going to see it. I'm really moving now and it's beginning to look more like a sky you know when you look out there um, and here is oh yeah I love that pink what is that pink I can't think of it oh uh, velvet it is Victorian velvet I put some of that and it's not even I put it around the outside going in a circular motion you can see that I'll add some more black soot I pushed out that white so I had that undertone in the sky and really if you left it like this and then when we take the Molotow off I'm putting more white on you can see that going round and round and round and round well wow, my hands going fast and then I rub it with a baby wipe going in circular motion and I get that um, you know you've got the lines because you push the white out and I think it looks a little more realistic to me. And now we're going to, this is the paper towel. We're going to take it up. Can you believe it? Yes, I have an email. 9.01 in the evening and an email just came through because I'm doing a voiceover. It happens every time. Just look at those beautiful dots from the Molotow. I love it. I just love it. 
I love everything about this because you're just taking your time and in a sky there's no perfection to it. I love doing things to, that don't require perfection, don't you? Perfection can give me a nasty headache. <laughs> you know, when I'm creating. I never think of anybody else who creates either. That's another thing that will help you. Don't think of somebody that's, you know, super spectacularly uh, talented. You just do what's comfortable for you to do. And yes, look at he's saying, don't listen to her. Don't listen to her. <laughs> yeah. Watch everybody else. So he, he pops up on me all the time. So, oh, it's raining gold again, but this isn't gold. It was supposed to rain snowflakes. Uh, yeah. This was supposed to be snow. I'm making snowflakes. And then I take it and I push it out towards those white marks that I made. See how I make it? And when it's wet, I will just push it out so it looks like a little explosion on there. I just love it. And then I will even make some dots and push it out with my hand later on. I don't know if it's on this piece. I make two of them. I make two, but two different styles. And this is going to be for my shaker. So I'm going to cut it down so I have a little bit of an edge on it. Not very much off of that. And um, yeah, I keep the, the sides I take off and I kept the stitches, I think, in the top and bottom. And here you can tell I changed it up, right? I knew it needed more black soot. It was just fading out to me. It, it just didn't have, it wasn't grounded on the edges you know, to where my explosion in the center, I wanted to contain it. Maybe that's what I want to say. I wanted to contain that. And then when you get it on, you just want to be careful not to uh, wipe it off. And what I do, ex <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> now I have to add more black soot. What are you doing? I will heat set it from underneath to dry it up because I am going to use... Uh, that uh, pen again and I'm going to yeah dot 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 I want to have those white you know even over top of the Molotov white that we you can see how I'm pushing it I will push some in towards the center once that white is uh, the signal pen is wet I will grab it and swipe it so you know it does it looks like it's moving you know, it, it has movement on the card. There you go. You know, don't get too crazy. Like, uh, you know, my mind goes everywhere. I have stories for everything. Like, oh, you know, they're just, oh, here comes the snow. Oh, yeah. I get right into it when I'm creating a card. I really do. And this church, I already had it in my stash. I love this stamp. It is from Stampscapes, of course, and all I did was stamp it. I put some clear embossing powder over it to have that shine, and I am going to just kind of situate my background. I wanted to have, the reason why the moose is on the front, I wanted to have kind of like a wilderness thing going on. Now, it's going to be all, like, all white. Folks, it's going to be all white, but it's going to be all white all of my images but I did want to rough it up you know I wanted to have that vintage look so I just took a layer of my cardstock I'm using 140 pound cardstock so you know I've got a, quite a few layers on here and I will even spray it and rub it with my hands you know back and forth to get that I needed one of them to have that more rugged look than a smooth blend of paper how's that yeah I'm trying to sound like I know what I'm doing <laughs> Those that watch my tutorials, you know that, uh, yeah, I just I just like to have fun. I really do. If I'm creating, uh, I, I want to enjoy myself. Um, oh, yeah, and this set, oh, my, this set, I'm going to do a card next with this. I did use some of the dies. Boy, it's my time to have emails tonight. I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to put that in there, but it does look nice, doesn't it? But I thought, why is there a log cabin floating in space? You know what I mean? The church looked better. And I'm going to leave links of all the stamps and dies that I used, even my black dots. 
Yes, I got these like four years ago. And I will leave a link to getting these. They're wonderful to have black. Uh, so, you, you know, it do, you don't see it through the sides. And they're really sticky. I think it's from the sticky... Oh, my. Just left me. But they are sticky. When you take that backing off, they're sticking. Yes, get all my stuff out of the way. Yeah, move everything, Carol. That's it. Concentrate on this piece. And doesn't it look good when you take that signal pen and you just push that white away? You know, like it's kind of shooting stars. I love it. And this is when I decided it's going to be a shaker. Uh, I'm using the thin strips. I'm in my stash now. Remember this. This is not creating for any one company. I'm using everybody's from every company that I can get a hold of. And these are the Doree strips, those tiny little strips, those narrow strips. I'll try to remember to leave a link for that as well. I ended up doing, I was only going to do it one high, but I ended up because the church was raised up just a little bit, it was going to hit the acetate. And there it is, the Doris. I'm into my third pack. Can you believe it? That means I'm doing a lot of shakers using these. And look how nice and thin they are. They're wonderful. So here we go. I left that on. I'm going to create my scene. This is from Rubbernecker. There's so many stamps and dies that I pulled out for this and the fence. And, you know, I'm going to wait until the end. I'm going to show you the products that I used. Summer Penny Black. Uh, yeah, I just walked around my craft room and grabbed everything that I, you know, I wanted to use out yeah, of my stash and wilderness look. I'm at a little bit of yellow so it looks like, you know, there's sun coming through the church windows when there's no sun there. But there is because I put the yellow in the center. So I thought, well, that's going to radiate onto the church. So I put a little bit of yellow on there. And then I ended up taking uh, the blender pen and just making it not so yellow on the top of the church. Now, we're going, excuse me, we're going to add the fence. And I want to make this as 3D as I make the rest of the elements. Like I'm going to do all four sides. So I wanted it to be that, you know, it's a 3D vignette die I'm using. There, you can see how I'm toning it down. I didn't want as much yellow because I don't have a lot of yellow in the middle of the card. And now I'm taking my Nouveau glue, spreading it around with my uh, little pick there. You know those picks I haven't used forever. Um, well, I used to use them when I worked in dental, but they're my, uh, oh, my, I can't even, I got them in my hand and they don't have I don't have anything written on them, but they're, I call them my pick sticks. Yeah, I got them for a dollar, a, a pack of a hundred. So here we go. I'm going to cut the fence off, put a tree, two trees behind, and one big tree in front. Now I'm going to use that snow stuff that I always use, and it is called uh, liquid applique. And when you heat it with your heat tool, it poofs up. Yes, I'll show you. Watch. Isn't that, oh, I just love, it's fabulous. I love it. Look at it. It's snow, instant snow. And that's why another thing I had to raise it up because all of my um, little crystal beads, I didn't want it sticking to the snow like tight, you know, and then eventually, you know, it tears off the liquid applique. So I did, you can see here, I'm going too high and it sounds so cute, eh? It's too high, folks. It's really too high. Well, Carol, take one of them off if it's too high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not funny, right? Oh, yeah, so here we go. I'm having fun. And, oh, look at those. Yeah, oh, and these, <laughs> look, how I had to go fast in some areas. This is my beads from, oh, I have to find it. You know it's going to be in the link. Uh, oh, it's on the end of my tongue. And look how nice, oh, I just love those shooting star things happening. and Snow, you can call it whatever. Now I'm taking it off. I need to put my acetate on there. And that's what I'm doing. You can see the acetate. And I have room to shake those beads. Yes, shake it, Carol. There we go. And it's kind of got this pink, yellow, blue, rainbow thing happening, going around in a circle. I love that background. I really do. Um, I wouldn't put a lid on it. An acetate lid if I wasn't happy with what was inside it. 
<laughs> you know, it's like putting cupcakes in a box, putting the lid on, and then the icing gets all over the lid, and you go to take it off, and they get their cupcakes with no icing, and you're licking the acetate box. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like that. Oh, and to get a 3D look, just put your fence on the outside of the acetate. I mean, it can't get any better than this. This way you don't have to stack it. You don't have to have all that glue one on top of the other. Look at, <clears throat> you have that, excuse me, you have that raised up look in the fence. Such a 3D look. And then the far away fence where my deer is, it looks farther away. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> what philosophy. <laughs> the close-up things look close-up, and the far-away things actually look far away. Go figure. Now, once I take my pokey tool and I get all the glue out, I'll cut that off. And I thought, you know, that looks a little bit bare. I want to do something around the edges. And then I found this tree, this kind of wilderness tree. And I'll share with you where that is from. It just escapes me now. But I took my little Altenu die cutting machine. It's three inches by six inches, I think, long. And I'm going through it because I need a lot of these to cut off because some twigs are short. And when I cut it, I really use the, uh, the uh, inner edge You'll see how I do it here. And some I use the outside edge because there's more branches. See that? I wanted it to have this real wilderness uh, in the bush feel. And you know I'm an in the bush kind of gal. And uh, yeah, so there you have it. Doesn't that look nice? It's kind of jaggedy and the evergreens are jaggedy. And you have the wonderful church there beautiful yeah it just reminds me of the beautiful wonder that the you know we have around us that the Lord has provided I just I love it and here yeah I was really getting to where my pick stick wasn't working <laughs> it's yeah just put it on there with your finger Carol and some I had I used double because I wanted it to be full this is a baby um, a baby wipe that I'm using here because it'll help with the acetate. You're not spreading it around and then I use a dry paper towel just to get all the little stickies off there. Yes, I'm very scientific when I do my tutorials. Have you noticed that? Yeah. And I like to, yeah, there's my <laughs> the in and the out. Which is the in and which is the out? You know, it's like going to the mall with the, I say this, I think I've said it before, the push and pull. And, you know, you have these big doors and you think it says push, but it says pull. And you push it and you smash your face right into the glass. I've done it so many times. And then you tr you look around and make sure nobody's looking at you. I don't do that because I think it's hysterical. I like to have a good laugh on myself. And I just go, boom, and I hit the glass. And I go, oh, that must have been a push, not a pull. No, it must have been a pull forward, not a push because that didn't move anywhere. <laughs> yeah, only my nose did, right into my face. But anywho, yeah, that, I've had a few of those experiences at the mall. Now here, I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna put the tree trunk because I am going to make it full on the top, but I don't want to hide my beautiful sky. So I just add, um, oh, you can see those. Oh, did I tell you those were honeybee? Uh, little crystal thingies I put inside the shaker, the little crystal small size from Honeybee. Yes, it has, oh, they look like little diamonds. They're beautiful. So what I did with this die, I took some of this, I cut it off on the trunk side, and I wanted the bottom to just have almost like hay, you know? this real jaggedy. You can see I'm making points out of it because, you know, you cut it with the scissors, you've got a straight square edge. I don't like that. I want it to look pointy. And so I pointed all of them. Yeah, I just cut them off to a point. And when I am creating, I don't care how much time it takes. If it takes me six years, it takes me six years to make a card. 
It takes me six minutes. Well, that's wonderful. I don't think I've ever made a card in six minutes, but you know, I just, this is my relaxing time. Look at that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not going to put two trunks there. Don't worry. I'm just looking, do I have enough or do I have to die cut another one? Yes, you guessed it. I had to die cut a couple of more because I want the fullness. See the right hand side? They look like lamp, like little arms just sticking out. I couldn't have that. I had to add more to the right there. I think I did. And <laughs> I'm really going in slow, slow mo here. Yes, you can even see the freckles on my arms. I'm going so slow. But anyhow, <laughs> I, I should stop this edit and do it in the morning. I know when I have full sense. But uh, why not, you know? So here we go. Okay, I had to start over. I did not have enough room uh, for that gusset. I did need to have a, um, excuse me, um, yeah, I just had a drink of Coca-Cola. Isn't that pathetic? Excuse me, Carol. And, um, yeah, so here I go. I ended up making it so that I had a half an inch. I probably did that off camera. I'm kind of thinking, okay, what are you doing here? I'm watching it. And I'm going, wow, yes, the last one I made didn't have enough room. And you can see if you have a shaker. But you have to always remember, you have one inch thick in your base, in your box, that you're putting this in. So you don't want to have like a one and a half inch gusset. You know, I wanted a half an inch that gave me room because I'm, yeah, I have the 3D vignette on the front of my card. Can you believe it? Oh, yes. When I do four-sided cards, I treat them as each side was a card. I don't say, okay, now this is the inside, so I won't make it as nice as the front. No. I want the inside, outside, upside down. All, all super duper. Let's go there. Yeah, when I put this on, I noticed I had to get out the big cutter because there was a little edge on there. Oh, I didn't take out the big one. Oh, well. Yeah, so I took that little bit off there. But when I, you know when I do a card, I like all of my front, back, inside. I like it all to look like it's, it's, you've taken the time. It's just, uh, and you know what? I'm not putting down people that don't put anything on the inside or they just do, you know, a matchy, matchy thing on the inside. Whatever you want to do, whatever you feel satisfied with, right? This makes me feel comfy. It's like my comfy time. So here I wanted to use up the twigs. So I decided to put one down each side. That way when you look at the card, it to me, to me now, it looks a little bit continuous. You know, that it just doesn't stop at the end of my card. I have some trees and trunks and limbs and things hanging off the sides. And it also, I don't know, it made the card look bigger for some reason. I got out my honk and roll a Quang tape, cut that off with my big scissors. I've been, see, I'm in my stash, friends. Oh yes, I got out my Tim Holtz, you know, 50 inch scissors. I used my small Busy Bee, whatever they're called, scissors. And uh, I was stashing it. I was going in my stash and just using it up. Why did I buy it? That's what I keep saying to myself. Carol, what do you keep buying stuff for? I love everything in my craft room, or I wouldn't have it exploding in my craft room, right? So I do want to use, look at this. Thank you, Deb. You were so sweet to send me this. One time I said how much I loved this when I saw it on YouTube, and Debbie sent it to me. Oh, yeah. She's a real friend. And now these lines on this thing, I'm going to leave the link to Amazing Paper Grace. And you watch her put this together. She does it in like six minutes or something. And slowly. Here I'm doing it fast. You want to have those lines at the bottom. Your slits in there to the bottom. You want to cut the two sides off of two pieces of the vignette die. Isn't it beautiful? And then we're going to stack it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And those I'm telling you go to the bottom, the lines. And I'm thinking, okay, what size do I need here? Zone in. I mitered the edges, as you can see. I don't like to have, when I die cut something, I don't like it square. I like to miter it on a slant. It makes it look nice, and uh, yeah, I guess that's the reason why I do it. It just makes it look nice. 
It's like putting lipstick on both your lips. <laughs> you want it to look nice. You don't. The other day, my husband and I were going to church, and I said to him, Oh no, Owen, quick, look at me. Do I have eye makeup on my left eye? I don't remember putting makeup on my left eye. <laughs> Yeah, I took my glasses off and I said, do I? Because I knew I wasn't going home. <laughs> I was going to sit in church with one eye with makeup on it and one eye without makeup on it, but I did. I did do it. I must have I, I must have done it so quick I didn't realize I did it. But I thought that was funny. Yeah, I've gone to, sh to church with my slippers on before. I just ran out the door so quick I had my slippers on. Mm -hmm. As long as you're going to church, that's what counts, right? So here we go. I'm just uh, showing you that you put this on now here just let me tell you something as i'm doing this there's a nice side and a not so nice side with the slits of this die and you want the good side here i'm just showing you i'm taking off the edge of the tape and you are going to use those two pieces uh, they're going to be what connects there and then the slits that you have you know those slots slit slots <laughs> the slots here you're just gonna put that there right like that and then put it down and I'm thinking is that right like when I bend it is this right no it wasn't I had to take it off it really what oh yeah that one was okay zoom in Carol it's been at least a day I can't remember a thing so I'm putting this in and I'm going why does that not it's supposed to push down and I don't know what I did, but it wasn't pushing down. So I had to take my knife and make the slits in that paper a little longer. Um, I don't know if that piece was defective and or which piece was, but one of them wasn't, it wasn't sliding down. So then I thought, okay, I got it now. You're going to put the tape on the good side right there, just like I had it. Yes, I got mixed up and I thought maybe I did it wrong, but I didn't. You're going to put it like this and put it down. Come on, Carol. There we go. And I'm trying to figure it out here. Okay, does it go on the outside, inside? Uh, do you hide it? Do you not hide it? Does it go like that? But no, I don't think it did. I'm trying to think here as I'm doing it. I think I took that. Let me just see. Do I make this work? Isn't this funny? That's why I tell you, go look at Amazing Paper Grace. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm thinking, is this the right thing? And I'll tell you if it's the right thing in just a minute. I think what threw me off here was when I put them in the slots, um, the slits, uh, they didn't slide down. So I thought, okay, I'll just cut those slits down a little bit, all even. Uh, what I could have done is just cut up the little tabs, just made a little slit in the tab so that I could push it down and make it even because it wasn't doing that. It didn't matter how I put them in. Uh, it has to come down and be even, every one of them at the bottom. And you can see it was not doing that. And I was thinking, okay, Carol, you know, just think, of, think about it. Just think about it. Don't go crazy and do something foolish. Just wait it out, and we will figure it out. And this this is what I did. I made the slits a little longer. So like I said, you can make, you know, I think one of these was defective. There, it's just sliding down perfectly. There you go, see? You can solve every problem. You just have to be patient at it. And uh, there you go. I'm super duper happy. I did one with solid white, one with the gold flakes, and one with a solid white, and one with the gold flakes. So I'm going to do it on the yuck side here, make the slit. So when I turn it over, all of them are going to go in and slide down. Now, if somebody says to you, I need a card in about 10 minutes, this isn't the card you want to make them. No. If they say, I'd like this card tomorrow, yes. I would, I would do this card, this vignette, but it does, if you're doing it for the first time, now I can make this probably in an hour if I did it again, because I know how to put it together now. This is the first time I've ever done a vignette. It's like a 
baguette. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. So here we go. I'm just going, okay, are all these even? Uh, there's five of them. I need one more. One more. There's supposed to be six. Oh, what I thought here, I put a piece of tape because I didn't want them sliding down. Like, you know, I wanted them to stay exactly where I made that slit. So I just cut the tape, did it like that. And you're going to see why that shiny piece of tape doesn't bother me as we keep going. Oh, yes, it doesn't. I do some crazy things here as we move forward. I really do. And look at that. That's what it's supposed to look like on the sides. So I'm putting tape because I don't want these things to slide down. They're perfectly situated and I'm going to make sure it stays that way. I was going to take some more of the edit out, but I thought, you know what, I'm not going to because once you passed an hour, who cares, right? <laughs> you've, you've gone beyond. So just, I just, I'm leaving it in. I'm just going to show you how pretty it looks and how excited I was to get this all situated so it worked. And if one of your dies, you know, they, they come to you delivered and they're just not to spec, make them to spec. Don't worry about it. Everything works out. It really does. Um, yeah, so I put this down and we have to do the other side. You know, we have to connect them here. But I don't, you don't want to connect them yet. I've got the tape on it, yes. But I am going to make 3D scenes on all of the windows. Carol, get that off. Oh, yeah, get it off, yeah. Make the slits, but I am going to put acetate on every one of those six windows. So what is what I did is I took the guts out of that the center that looks like a window, that looks like a piece of toast. I took that and I measured with a piece of acetate and I put a sixteenth of an inch around the edge of the toast and I made acetate pieces for every one of those windows. Yes, I did. There's my toast. See? Comes out. Looks like a piece of toast. Take your acetate, put it be, uh, on top or behind, whatever. And then I cut a, just a sixteenth of an inch because I didn't want it to go past the frame work there. And I went nice and slow, even though I sped it up. I went nice and slow and made it nice and even, you know, so it was pretty and you couldn't tell. And I went right around there with some sixteenth of an inch uh, double-sided suit clean tape. And you can use any double-sided tape or you can use liquid tape, whatever you want. But I like to use double-sided tape when I use um, uh, acetate. Now, I may get halfway through this and think, you know what, I don't, I, I'm just putting liquid. I don't know. Sometimes I do that. But I think I stuck with the double-sided tape here. Look at me go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's another thing. I make sure I powder up my acetate. Now, isn't this funny? I will be doing an emboss and forget to put that powder every time. Look at that sixteenth of an inch. It turns those corners beautifully. And I will forget to put the powder on, you know, when I'm doing embossing, but I never forget to put it on acetate. That kills me. I think it's so funny because I don't want static. I don't want all, you know, everything from all around my room suctioning onto my acetate. So I put the baby powder or whatever kind of powder you have on there and brush it, wipe it with a nice fluffy cloth. There you go. Look at that. I did it all in one swipe. Put the acetate window on there so it's nice. Oh, yeah, it's just perfect. Get that out of there. And look at You don't see any strays of too much um, fluffies on there. Yeah, I, it's very important to me. You can tell. I'm saying, look at that. And now the decorations. Yes, I'm going to put a fence, of course. Look, it goes perfectly. And then I'm going to build it out so that it has a 3D look. Now, once you get it built, you know, it's like building a house. Once you get it all built, you love to go in and decorate it, you know. And this is the fun part of it. I like to decorate it. I've got the complicated stuff down. You know, it's actually built and looks like what it's supposed to look like in the end. <laughs> so that's a bonus. So I'm taking uh, my Nouveau glue and I'm thinking, okay, put a bunny and a bird. So I put a bunny up on that little post. It's so cute. You know, when you grab a lot of your dyes that you haven't used forever 
and die cut them and put them in a big pile beside you and then create with that, you know? Uh, yeah, and have a drink of Coca-Cola. I think that's maybe what I did right there. And uh, I was actually, because I had the flu, I was actually doing ginger ale too. <laughs> one day ginger ale, one day Coca-Cola. Yes. So here we go. I'm going to put, like I said, six acetate windows on this vignette card. Then you have every other piece with the gold peeking through. I think you're going to love it. I can't wait to give it away. Um, I'll probably give it away. Uh, today's the 16th. 20, probably around the 24th. I'll give it a week for people to view the card and uh, and I'm going to ask a question that you can answer if you want to enter. Um, and I'll think of that as I'm going here. That'd be kind of fun because I like to get to know who my subscribers are. I love meeting new subscribers and I love talking to my uh, subscribers that have been with me for a while. Uh, uh, you know, I really do enjoy it. I love answering all my comments. And yeah, there we go. Look at that. It's like doing windows, you know, putting windows in a house. It's beauteous. And look at that gold foil that, uh, well, it's not, is it fo called foil? It's leafing, I think it's called. Gold leaf. And uh, this one is Mona Lisa Speedball. Simple leaf. And you can get your 40% coupon on that and pick it up for a really good price. So this is the next one. I've turned it over and now I'm going to add another fence, you know. So you know how the a vignette look. It looks like it's coming out at you like do 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 do. It's like an accordion. It's coming out at you. So um, I'm going to do a fence and I'm going to put my deer and I've got the bird on the first one. Don't go nuts putting a ton of things on there because by the time you get to the sixth window, <laughs> You're not going to see anything. You think you want to just fill it up because you're looking at it, right? You're looking at that one page. But you have to remember you have six of them. Yeah, so I put one eating, one looking up. Now it looks like the bird's on his back. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a very tame deer. Let that bird stay right there. And you can add some foliage and some trees like I'm going to do here. Uh, you just don't want to add too much and cover up that beautiful window vignette look. Um, yeah, I decided to put one on the first page, I guess, because once I shut it, I thought, boy, that looks nice. Like, look at, I've got a big tree to the back, a medium tree to the front, and now I'm building this out. And wait till you see when I put this on the sky. This goes over top of another piece of that we're going to make uh, but it's going to be different in a different look I'll share that with you later on of course I don't know how far we are into the video um, but yeah I look at that just a running tw uh, twig twine twig or twine tomato tomato could be either or and uh, yeah I had this dog I mean come on Carol Get rid of that dog. You don't want a dog there. You've got deer to scare the deer. And what have I got there? I got a bunny, but I think I put the bunny down. I don't know. I can't remember. Is he in the fence? He could be. Uh, it's been a while. Once you get that glue on that acetate, oh yeah, the bunny's staying right there. There you go. Isn't that nice? And you can see right through it because you're not going to add something over top of something. So I think it looks very pretty. I think it'd look beautiful if you colored it, you know, with your oxide inks or your, any kind of inks. You know, I love any kind of inks. Um, yeah. So I'm just, you know, your LDRS Creative Hybrid inks would look nice on this. That would just be nice as well. And here I, ha I have to put the last piece of acetate because this is the one that we glue on the front piece so that you have six running all the way down. That's why they call it a 3D vignette card. And you have to attach them. Oh yeah, don't forget to attach them. Yes, that's a must. So go all the way down there and do that and make sure they slide to the bottom even. That's important. Isn't this fun? 
I hope it's not like watching paint dry <laughs> when you're watching me. I didn't know how much to speed this up and, and how much to, uh, you know, fast forward it or to leave it in a little bit of time because, you know, slow time. So you could spend some time with me. It's been a long time. Talk about time. It has been. I think the last tutorial I put up was like a, oh, what it was, a 10 minute Grinch card at Christmas on the 23rd. Oh, I just miss everybody. There we go, making some little slits a little longer so that they reach. And um, you do what you have to do. I know I'm going to be using this card. I have a few other ideas for using this vignette card die. And now you're going to attach all those tabs into that piece. And when you get to the end, you're going to pull the tape off and you're going to add the sixth die cut. And it's going to look beautiful. You're going to love it. Yeah. So as I do this, I just want to see. I even took my ruler to make sure it was all even all the way across. I thought, you know, Carrie, you should just make sure all of them are even. So I grabbed my T-square. I mean, if I'm going to use my stash, I haven't used my T-square ruler in a while. I'll use that. Yeah. And I don't know if I was answering an email there. <laughs> Isn't that pathetic? I should have taken that out. I am so sorry. You know, I, actually, I could have, uh, I don't know what I was doing there. I apologize. I could have went over to see Amazing Paper Grace <laughs> and see how she was doing it. I don't know. But I do know that I get back to this. I start putting it together, and then I thought to myself, okay, you want to make sure all of these, oh, I know what I did. I took my time to put them all together and make sure I taped it, and it went in every slot, and it was even on the bottom, because I am going to give this away, even if I just mailed it to somebody. You know, I want it to not fall apart, and uh, I want, yeah, okay, let's move on. Come on. Let's move on. All right, you can see I'm doing different colors here. Yes, picked raspberry and the lemonade and the black soot and the pistachio. That's where I got the pistachio from. And I'm making it super bright in the middle. I'm going around and around. I always go around and around and around. I start from the middle instead of uh, going from the outside in because I know that you're going to only be looking through that, that vignette window let's call it a window and you're only going to see bits of this mainly the center because we have put a scene in this right so i want that yellow to shine through and then i want it to be just a tad uh excuse me yeah <laughs> well at least he's consistent he went through the oxide ink before i'm grabbing a paper towel because it's getting all over my fingers and i know i'm going to touch my card and yeah I'm putting them away, I'm grabbing the black soot, I'm going to go over the edges, and yep, boy, I'm going 100 miles an hour. I'm going to make sure I put, uh, you know, I make a light hand. There's nothing worse to see all the, but even if you saw your round circles on this, even if you did, and you didn't get a perfect blend, it's not going to matter because you have the busyness of doing a 3D scene. So. You know, don't really, um, you know, uh, tire your brains out thinking that it has to be perfect. It doesn't. Nothing has to be perfect, you know. Uh, so here we go. Yeah. Oh, exciting. Yes, fireworks. That must mean I'm, I'm almost halfway through. <laughs> it's a cold word. I'm halfway through. Yay. Now you're going to see I'm going to move quite fast as we get moving on this and you're saying oh thank you Carol <laughs> yeah but I'm making sure I make it like a circle you know that I kind of give it that circular look on the corners for some reason and I knew that the black is going to be towards the outside because this is the front panel of my card this is where that 3d vignette section is going to be I've already built up the inside one but I knew that with the white on this, like, you know, looking through white, I want it to be super vivid. Where the other one that I had the gate and things, I wanted to look with the church more like a 
calming evening type uh, scenery where this I want it to be bright and you know kind of in your face so you can see and it's such a light touch my friends really is a light touch and then heat it up on the back so you when you go over it with your hands it's not coming off and look at that now I'm going to get my signal broad white pen a gel pen would work anything you have in your stash that's white and make your dots but this time instead of pushing the ink forward oh yeah there it is isn't that gorgeous I love this look I really do and in the other one remember we put the Molotow masking fluid on it so that when we rubbed it off you had a look like this but I'm making actual stars you can see I'm making that you know little things stars and I'm pushing out some of them I want the star ends this is how fussy and detailed I am when I'm working. That's why my tutorials take so long and they're not up one after another because I like to spend a lot of time thinking through what I'm doing. You know, I'm sure everybody does. I shouldn't say it like, you know, oh, I'm the only person that thinks through their cards. No, I'm not. I'm slow. <laughs> That's the word. And see how I like to get those points and push them out while your ink is wet. Just give it a little push and you get that nice line in your stars. And isn't it pretty? It's really pretty. I'm really happy with it. Now, I had this embossing um, uh, powder and it is uh, really sparkly. What's it called here? I'll get it for you. I'm sitting right here and it's right beside me. It is called Holographic ultra fine embossing powder and I used that because it just gave me that exactly what I wanted like that sparkly thing on the edges you notice I didn't put it in the center I only put it on the four corner edges where my stars are I'm putting my uh, I think this is five inch tape on the back uh, it, yeah it has to be pretty close because this is a five by seven inch card and uh, oh, I'm just in love with this um, Christina Griffith set, box set. Now you'll notice, cough there, excuse me. You notice that the backing to the tape, it's wax, and I'm putting it underneath. As I am putting this down onto my card front, I don't want it to stick crooked. That would be a nightmare. So I slide that wax portion underneath what I'm putting down and only release it slowly as I see that my card base is even. And then when I get to the bottom, it's totally right on. Yes, that's why I was doing that. You can slow it down and see that I put that wax backing to the Suquang tape. And here I had I put my, um, my um, what is that thing called? My bone folder. <laughs> I slid it up the side so that I could press it down when I put this sixth uh, vignette piece onto it. So you can see I'm sliding it on and taking the tape off here, off the front to put down, oh, let's just slide it in there, to put my acetate piece on. And I'm adding some super duper glue around there as well, just for stability on the front just let me see here and I'm going to slide it this is what has to seat on the back so I mean I want that glue and I want the sequin tape I want so much tape on the back of that too that it is going to stick and it's going to travel not only that I pushed glue into all of these tabs with my pokey tool Put, let me just show you right down in so it dries and that's not going to come apart. You know me. If something came apart in the traveling stage, I wouldn't be happy. I really wouldn't. I want it to arrive to its destination in one, just the way I created it. <laughs> Can you imagine like, you know, somebody gets my card and they have to put it back together. <laughs> Is this a do-it-yourself? And look at that. I want you to see way down in there. See that yellow, pink, bold, blue coming right at you, sky? 
with the beautiful stars on the outside of it. Oh, I can't stand it. Now I'm drying it. I'm drying it because you know what I'm going to do. Okay, let's see if you can guess. Okay, that's enough time. <laughs> I <laughs> It's after 10. Yeah, I am putting um, a bevel, an acetate bevel over this. I don't want anybody touching my uh, little tabs. I think it looks naked on there. I don't like the look of it just hanging out there. So I thought I want to cover that, you know, so it has its own little casing of acetate around it. So I love using bevel, bevels with acetate. You know a lot of my cards have bevels. So I took, I measured it out. Oh, I, am I adding a few more stars here? I don't know what I'm doing. Probably am. Yeah, I'm pushing it out. See how I'm pushing it out to get those pointed ends on it. Oh, I just, yeah. I love doing night skies. Can you tell? Um, I love creating. I love, well, editing. Yeah, that 35 hours down to this time was kind of challenging, but that's okay. I need a challenge. I haven't done it for a while. And um, I love to do the voiceover. There's my, look at that. Oh, yeah. No dusties are in there. It looks really good. And you've got that uh, holographic, I hope that's the way you say it. For some reason, it doesn't sound right, but, you know, who knows? You know what I'm talking about. It's sparkly. Sparkly embossing powder. And here comes my bevel. I thought, now that bevel has to bend when I put it in that one inch. I only have an inch. So I measured it, and I thought, I can get a bevel on there. Just cut it off, Carol. So I cut it to the, to, I had, let me see. I had two inch, no, the sides were, I have a ruler here, the sides measured, let me see, an inch and a half, yes, an inch and a half, and so I added a sixteenth of an inch, put it on my uh, scoreboard, you can see it right there, I only scored that one line in, that is really, really thin, I put my sixteenth inch double-sided sequin tape on the edge, slid it kind of underneath the uh, actual vignette, the cardstock, and it worked perfect. I put the glue and the double-sided tape. I wanted this to stay because this is going to, I'm going to flatten it to get it in the box to send off to whoever gets this card. And... Um, so I have to make sure that it is super secure and it is going to bend so that I flatten it out with the vignette six layers and fit in the one inch box. And I'm telling you, it fits perfectly, perfectly. It's not, you know, when I take it out, it just goes, boing, comes right out and looks like, just like I made it. I am, of course, I'm mitering the edges of the acetate as well. Get in the habit of mitering, and you'll love it. And the same as the powder on acetate. You really like that, getting that static out of there. That is a bonus. <clears throat> you can tell I'm starting to lose my voice, but I'm going to stick at this. I'm going to get it done. I'm going to take my a stylus, and I'm going to really press on this. It's the double-sided tape with just a little bit of dots of the Nouveau glue, just a little bit going down the double-sided tape. And you can see I really want to give it a workout because this is going to bend to go in the mail. And I'm sure it's not going to, you know, stay in the uh, actual box. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, here you just want to really work it. Really make sure that that thing is secure. And the sequin tape, the double-sided tape, I have to tell you, it is sticky. I haven't had anybody that I send my cards to tell me that it has come apart. And there you have it, a little bevel protecting the tabs. Uh, I just think it's so cute. I don't think it's over the top <clears throat> to give to somebody, excuse me. And look at the inside there of that sky. It's kind of like morning that the deer are coming out. This is more of a night sky on the inside, kind of like a dusk, you know, just before it gets to getting really dark. And I'm really happy with this card. 
uh, I have to decorate the box and I have to do the back of the actual card. So I'll show you there's a few boo-boos that happen, but I kept them in there because they do happen and I'm not ashamed of that. It, uh, the more boo-boos I make, the more practice I get to make it right. So it doesn't bother me at all to make mistakes. And I don't throw any, I have to say, I seldom throw anything out, um, you know. So I like to, yeah, I'm cutting off all the edges. I ran this through the actual box die so that I knew that it was going to fit perfectly as far as the sides are concerned around the die cut, the Spellbinder center die. So, um, yeah, and now I'm just using some Nouveau glue because it dries clear, and I don't know what I'm using there. My pokey tool, can you believe it? Yeah, my pokey tool. And I'm putting the glue on there, whatever works, and then run it with your hand. Oh, yeah, I'm in my house coat. <laughs> I got my jewels and my house coat on it. My nails done. <laughs> yeah, I must have been a little cool, so I put my uh, house coat on. Yeah, uh, I have one on right now. <laughs> yes, but uh, what time is it? It's 5 after 10. That's not bad. And I'm going strong. So here's my ghosting of the black on the inside. So when you turn it around, I want to have that shadow. Yeah, go wash your hands, Carol. I want to have a shadow on the white. I walk the line, don't I, of getting stuff on the white cardstock. You know I go crazy when something goes on my white cardstock. And here, yeah, I'm looking for something. Where's my paper towels? Oh, now I speed it up, yes, to put my acetate on there. So put the double-sided tape around. See, I powdered it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't believe it. I don't powder when I do my embossing powders half the time, but I do when I use acetate. There's nothing worse than to get that static stuff from the air, you know, the dust. I have enough dust. I don't need to have dust on my cards too, right? <laughs> so here I go, 16th of an inch sequin tape. Get it off there and let's get the acetate on and move on, right? Whew, yeah. So here we go. Get that on there and we are pressing forward. I didn't make it to finish this last night. I actually fell asleep. I went and took a break and I fell asleep. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. <laughs> didn't do anything to my brain, right? I fell asleep. Come on, Carol, what's the matter with you? Oh, you think it was still nighttime and it's early morning. So here we go. I am just creating this box. You're going to want to fold all of the edges because it's going to uh, need the back portion put onto this front portion and you're going to need to do some cutting. So on the bottom part, you're going to cut the little squares off. So I'll show you that in just a second when it goes on. I'm trying to figure it out myself here. And uh, yeah, let that one go. I, oh, I'm going to come back to it. <laughs> it must have been one of those things where I thought, oh, I can't deal with that right now. I'm going to come back to it. Yes, it's very simple, the cutting uh, of the box. And you can go over to Christina Griffith's channel and you'll see she's made tons of these boxes. And she makes it look so easy peasy. And I can make it look so complicated <laughs> when it isn't. It's very easy. It's beauteous, as I always say. So let's grab three colors, a dark blue, a light blue, and then some green, because this is going to be the dye that I'm using. And I'm going to use Blessing, and because I'm going to send it to one subscriber. Uh, you know, this is when I wish I could send them to all my subscribers. And I'm almost, I'm almost, I'm at 18,000 subscribers. I cannot believe it. I feel so incredibly blessed by each one of you, I tell you. It's just, you know, 18,000, not, not 18 people. That's what I figured I'd get. <laughs> I mean, my videos are almost two hours long now. Yeah, I worked my way up from 15 minutes when I started to two-hour tutorials. Yeah, I'm going to cut back. I have a nice uh, card I'm going to do next, and it won't be this long. 
So that will give some people hope, <laughs> right? That something else is coming up where they don't have to take a day off work or, uh, you know, stop everything they're doing all day to watch the tutorial. So here we are. Isn't this font beautiful? It really is. And that one, I haven't put anything away, so everything is beside me. And remember I told you I would tell you about that tree dye where I cut around the edges? That's a Penny Black dye. And uh, they're called Creative Dyes by Penny Black. The fence is one of them as well. Uh, yeah, I was really searching my stash. And sorry, you're going to hear me just kind of move away. Yeah, I'm putting all the... I double cut everything. So I had two words, bless, which is nice. Then you have the I-N-G. And then you have the apostrophe S. Isn't that wonderful? I just love this. You can ghost them in white or black or pile them high straight on. Leave it flat, whatever you want to do. But um, yeah, it just looks pretty just sitting on this, doesn't it? Well, the honeybee is this die with the bless, and it has the stamp as well. So you can stamp it and then cut it if you want it in um, a certain color that you're doing your project in. I'm back. I don't like turning away from my mic, but here we go. So, uh, yeah. So i thinking, okay, what am I going to do with this extra one? And I decided to take my cutting knife. I started with scissors, and I thought that's not going to work. I'm going to get rough edges. So I took my cutting knife and I went all the way around the edges because you know what? I want to use that frame for something else. So I was really careful as I was cutting around and uh, to keep the frame. And yeah, it works out really well. So I cut that out and I'm going to put these little, uh, reminds me of little honeycombs, but they're not even shaped like that. I don't know running them through my sticky sticky machine. Love this little thing when something fits in there. You can put two of them, which is fabulous. Xyron, you can't beat it. Beautiful, beautiful product. So I'm going to do three of these and I'm going to cut them and match them up with the black. That way the ghosting behind there kind of uh, stands out if you have the black. And I figured I needed to have something uh, can you believe this? Yeah, here comes the emails. I really do apologize. And uh, yeah, so let's take them off and put them together. Yes, I have them coming in on my iPad to the left. I have them coming in on my, uh, com my desk computer <laughs> as well. You can't get away from it, right? And uh, here we go. I'm just situating it with the same... You know, trying to line it up is what I'm trying to say there. And then just flicking the goobers off. And I think it makes for a nice box. It just, you know, it's really nice. I like it. And don't worry about the glue. It comes off easily. And if you put a little bit of baby powder on the end of your fingers, it helps to take off that glue as well if you don't want to, you know, sit there and take it off with the pokey tool. I have done that many times. After I get this done, the thing for me was, oh, here's where I'm ghosting with black, I'm putting the black cardstock behind there. And I really like the look on that because it is going on white. So I thought, why am I going to put white and make it higher? Because you're not going to see the white because it's going to be on white. Uh, you know, so that's why I didn't go further with the white die cuts that I had there on the side. And it's oh so pretty and it matches the color of both skies you know the front of the card or the inside shaker portion of the card it matches wonderfully and I was thinking yes I'm just kind of looking at the color which blue matches and you know they match the the inside portion of both of them not so much the outside because you have the black soot but I just think it just adds contrast but it got lost. Yeah, that wasn't happening there. You go to all that trouble and then you put it on the front and it gets lost. I wasn't going to do that. But I knew I wanted to do all four sides of this card giveaway. So I put Blessing right there. It is so pretty. I just love it. And 
What am I thinking to do there? I was wondering if I should have put the black on top so that the black soot stood out. And then I thought, why not cover up everything you did on the front card, Carol? <laughs> yeah, cover your 3D vignette with the word blessing so nobody can see all that work he did underneath. That wasn't a smart idea, but I thought of it. <laughs> yeah, you never know, right? Yeah, I'm going, come on, Carol, think. What are you going to do? You have to have a running theme. That's the key uh, to... Uh, you know, from the box to the out. Oh, isn't that nice? Sorry, I keep jumping into another, uh, you know, sentence here, another thought. But I love the way the bevel comes out with the acetate protecting those little tabs. I really do like that. And now I found this uh, Jillian die. I'm going to leave that in the link. It has this beautiful little frame. It has the nice banner. Uh, it has the straight edge banner there that you can just put a sentiment on. Uh, and be very careful. I have to stress that because I'll tell you what's, it's not so much the flying little bits of metal that uh, get away from you, but what happens is when you take your hand and you, you don't even think to put a cloth in your hand and you wipe your counter, whatever surface you're working on, I'm telling you, they will get up just like a sliver in your hand. And uh, yeah, I tell you because it's happened to me and I don't like that feeling. <laughs> I don't like poking them out, you know, with a pin. So be very careful when you do that. It's almost better to do it inside of a box. Now, this is funny. I put the powder on and I situated my die because that blessing die I cut apart. I used it for something else, another project one time, so I cut it. And now I was putting it back together. And when I took my Fiskars press, I just pressed it down to put it in place on my Fiskars, uh, right, yeah, that plate there. And I didn't clean it the last time I used it. So <laughs> the Versa mark went on there. Well, only in certain spots. So I couldn't go back. I would never get it even. So that's why it's wonderful because paper has two sides. There you go. Sending blessings from our family to yours. Isn't that nice? And that's a Catherine Pooler stamp, too, by the way. And, uh, yeah, I just loved this. I couldn't wait to buy that one. That was a few years back. This came out. I don't know if they're still available, but I will try and find the link. Here I'm just uh, using my blush brush. Yeah, I washed it up, and I thought, I'm going to use that. Now, I want. I see that a lot of people are using this. these brushes here. Now, I don't know where I bought this one, but I was at the dollar store. You know our dollar store where nothing's a dollar? And I saw them, and I picked, they, there was only one left, and so I asked them, are you going to get these in? And she said yes, to come back in February. And they generally get all different sizes, and they're $1.25 each. So you know I am going back and getting those, $1.25 each, yeah. No, I'm not going back and getting them. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not going shopping. Oh. What? How many of you said, no, you're not, Carol? <laughs> you're not going shopping. You just told us you're not shopping for three months. Okay, I'm not getting those. I have to be happy with just the two of them that I have. <laughs> yeah. See how quick I can go shopping? It's just like, oh, I see that. Okay, I'll go get it. No, you're not. You're not going shopping. Yes, January, February, March. Yeah, so April 1st, you can go and uh, have yourself an April Fool's Day shopping spree. <laughs> you're not doing it this week. Oh, that was funny. I know, probably nobody else thought it was funny. I'm cracking myself up because how quickly I said, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go get them. No, you're not. And that's in February. What if I get somebody else to go get it for me? <laughs> that's so wrong. Forget I said that. So here you go. I'm cutting the, the top off, completely off the top of the bottom portion of the box. The box, we didn't have anything. And then you're going to t cut out, let me just show you here, the two little, you'll see it once I stop, if I get there. On the bottom portion, you cut the top completely off, 
and then the two corner squares on the bottom you cut off because you don't need them because the top portion that we put the die cut in the center here already has the fold so you don't need the fold so you're going to add some liquid glue I like liquid glue when I'm dealing with putting boxes together it just works for me I feel comfortable with it holding yeah zoom out and see how I cut the two squares out of the bottom there so you have to wipe out the top and wipe out the little squares on the bottom this is the back of the box obviously and then you're going to glue down both of the edges and then glue the flaps to the bottom so here we go I thought oh I'll use this one yeah it's dried out in the nib so I have to put it in boiling water the metal nib to get all of the glue out and so I had to go back to my Nouveau and either or you know works well I have to clean the tips of the applicators that I have and all I do is I boil a little pot of hot water and then I set my gold nib you know even if you let it uh, cool down a little bit you can put your plastic nibs and it'll make the glue all nice and runny and it'll clean clean it out so that you can start making a mess again <laughs> yeah so here we go I'm just rubbing it like that and pressing it you can flatten it too Carol see yep yeah, there we go yes flatten it out and look at that isn't that easy peasy put glue on the two flaps right there and fold it over it is so yeah and glue that and you have the bottom done so you've got the flaps you can slide a ruler down there you know and press it down on the inside and uh, all kinds of things that you can do anything that you have hanging around that's uh Going to reach down there would be fantastic. And then all we have to do now is to create the front and the back. <laughs> yes. I had to put a notice up there for my lap because I didn't want somebody to have the volume on loud and all of a sudden this crazy laughing person comes really loud on the screen. I, I, I couldn't control myself. That was, uh, I think that was the, even this morning. I wasn't even, I can't even blame it on last night being tired. Yeah, so anyway, see how quickly I jumped to shop? That's crazy. Here I am making sure that I can put it inside the box, and I can nicely. Those uh, acetate bevels, they, they just press down beautifully. And you know what I like about doing this, like test, 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 is they're not boinging out, <laughs> and I have to come up with plan B or plan C. You know, it worked. Now, he, no, 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 now, <laughs> yeah, I'm stuttering. Here are many die cuts that I keep in little baggies from each project, you know, in color baggies, so I can go back and maybe use them. I mean, that's what we have to do, right? Especially if we do large, um, larger length tutorials and you're filling in a lot of space and you don't want to die cut a die cut die cut just reach for things that you did before and that's what I'm doing here it's so nice when you get uh, this far along to be able to just not worry about die cutting or stamping anything else that you're pretty well prepared uh, with having a baggie full of these white cardstock die cuts so that helped me out there now here's where it all began I didn't press hard enough because on the opposite side of this is my shaker. So when I put my stamp on there, you know, created especially for you by Carol Held, the for you didn't show up because I really didn't want to have a heavy hand. So I have to cover it. I tried to put for you in there with a pen, but you know, it just doesn't look right. So, uh, yeah, wait till you see this. And you probably can notice it if you look at the left side. I put it upside down. Like, okay, you'll see this in a second. I'm not paying attention. I'm paying more attention to get the gooby glue off than I am. It's this one tiny little speck that I'm trying to get off there. But when I close it, yes, close it up, Carol, so that I think this is the part. You know, it's been so long. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, yeah, so I am not looking to the left 
And seeing that I am upside down, I stamped it upside down, I think. And I'm putting a gate and I'm putting a nice little deer on there and it's looking pretty good until I turn the card around and then I look to the back and it's all <laughs> wrong side up, so they say. But that's okay because you can just rip it off. That's what I do. I rip it off and come up with plan C. I could be on plan uh, G. Oh yeah, use your old shirt tail there, Carol. Do it all the time. Yes, what starts as a three-quarter sleeved uh, t-shirt ends up hanging over my fingers from grabbing it. Not really, it's it's a full-length uh, sweater. So, a t-shirt. So, anyway, look at, I'm looking at, I'm going, can you believe this? Can you believe it? Yeah, that's when you know you're tired, but that's okay, because I have this stitched piece that I die cut, you know, 40 of them, so I can grab this, put some glue on the back, and call it done. But there's another boo-boo that got in there, and I don't know if I showed it. I set my card to the left, and guess what I set it on? Yes, you guessed it, a baby wipe. And it warped some of the card, and I'm covering that little uh, warp in it. I don't know if I show you that, but you can see a little bit of it up there at the top if I were to stop the video and show you, but I guess I moved along. Those things happen and you have to be prepared for them. I am always prepared for boo-boos. They happen all the time, yeah. So let's move on. I want to do the other side, but because I have a shaker and it has a beautiful uh, background on it that I think is beautiful, I don't want to make the opposite side that, um, you know, overwhelming. So the word blessing is perfect. You have the beautiful church. It looks like our church. It, it's uh, our church is Calvary Baptist Church. And it looks just like our little church, country church. I love it. And that's why I bought that. Way back when, don't worry, way back when. <laughs> Not recently, and I'm gonna try to hold in my laughs. I scare I scare my grandkids because they'll say something funny, then all of a sudden this great big foghorn laugh comes out and you know, it blows their hair back <laughs> if it's a girl. Most of my grandsons have more brush cut type army haircuts, but <laughs> yeah, it's their oh man, you scared me half to death. Yes, I have, um, I do that. I think I put blessings, actually. I don't think I just put blessing. I think I added the S because I had too much space on the right. So I put the S there. Get it on there, Carol. And I was super duper happy. You know, it's not the, I think the letter L was the right blue, but you know, it, I liked it. And that's really all that matters, right? Blessings. Yeah, shiny, the acetate, we have sending blessings, and now I have to create the front. Are you still with me? Oh, I'm so thankful. Thank you to all my new subscribers. I just uh, wrote a comment to a subscriber from Texas, and it's so nice to hear from where everybody is from. I like that, and I really do love my comments. I love answering them and getting to know my nearly 18,000 subscribers. Oh, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. You have no idea. I really thank the Lord for allowing me the privilege, the health to come on and to create, you know, and bring a smile. That's my goal. It's not so much to bring all these projects, which I love doing, but if, if I can just bring one smile to your face, it's made my day. It really has. So here's my Nouveau Drops. Can you believe they match the colors, the two colors that I have? I don't have a ton of Nouveau Drops at all, uh, maybe four. Uh, I could turn around in my wheelchair and look. <laughs> my chair with wheels, I shouldn't say wheelchair. My chair with wheels, I could turn around and see how many I have because I have it on a little rolly thing over there. But it uh, doesn't matter. As long as you know I have a few and I can use them, that's lovely 
So here we go. It has an imprint on this die of a three-pronged, like pronged, <laughs> a three-petal flower pronged. Yeah, if it was a rose, I think I could say that. Um, but here we go. I'm going over it, and then I take my pokey tool to kind of fashion it to the same, yep, there it is, to the same way it looks on the actual emboss. So there you have it. And then I'm going to take my um, glossy accents and I'm going to go around all of the edge because I knew I was going to leave. Oh no, it's not my glossy accents. It's my Nouveau Crystal Drops. The ones you're supposed to put just little droplets on there. <laughs> I'm filling in all of the black because let me tell you, the shine you get with this is just like glossy accents. It's beautiful. And it works itself out. You know when you're doing this and you're putting it down, you're thinking, boy, this looks really globby. It doesn't look like it's going to settle down and look kind of like a plastic cover. But it really does. It really does, I have to tell you. And it brings the black alive. It's so intense. I just really like these crystal drops. And if I had, I use a lot of different things other than glossy accents that uh, some are more affordable to use than others and I'll try to leave a link if I think of it at the end but um, I'm just gonna turn around well yeah I have to leave it because if I talk with my back to the mic that's not gonna be good so anyway look at that you can see how it's kinda looks kinda navy and blue but when this dries overnight the net like Today, when I went to look at this box, it was gorgeous. I was super, super, super happy with it. So there we go. Not just super happy. I was super, super, super happy. <laughs> okay, here we go. Woo! We're finished. I'm just going to show you the supplies that I used. So let's start here. This is a Jillian Vance design die set. I will leave the link if I can find it. You know the Honey Bee Blessed Blessing and Blessed Stamp and Dies. I use that. Spell Binders, 5x7 set. The Catherine Pooler Sending Blessing Stamp. And there's another one, but I didn't use this one from Technique Tuesday. This is the 5x7 Spell Binder die I used for the inside. Like you're going to be able to see that, right? <laughs> yes. And then Rubbernecker Stamps and... Uh, the, the, these ones here by Penny Black, oh, I have a lot of these and I love them. So here's another one. And I will leave everything else uh, that I didn't show in the description on my blog probably. I didn't even use this. This is from my friend Debbie, the 3D vignette die. Thank you, Debbie, so very much. She is such a good friend to me. And these, again, are rubbernecker. These were a free gift sent to me to design with. I'm so grateful. They're a wonderful company. I didn't use my, uh, the only way I used my mousse was at the beginning of my video. And look at the little mousse there. I should have put them in there. I'm going to make a card with that. The, the most generous people ever are rubbernecker stamps. I'm telling you. You need to check, they have some, check their site out. I will put their uh, link so you can just link right over to it. Now, uh, they, they, yes, I'm showing you, those are all the dies I kept together and I don't know what I'm doing there, but I want to show you something that my friend Pat Posk, now Pat, she sent me this for Christmas. She has been a subscriber for some time. I love the way that's vintage, Pat. And I'm not going to tell you her age, but... I tell you what, I'm going to say that she is over 80. Can you believe it? And look at this card. Yes, she's followed my channel for a long time. She's a wonderful friend. You will see her comment on every video. She wrote me a lovely letter. I wanted to show you her gorgeous handwriting. She has beautiful penmanship. You really do. And I want to thank you, Pat. I want to thank you for your encouragement. You are a blessing to me, as are all my subscribers. But she sent me this, and it blessed my soul, and I waited to open it up to put it on this tutorial. Thank you, Pat. You are a blessing. It's beautiful. And you are a blessing for watching my tutorial, especially sticking this out with me. It is wonderful. 
And there you have it. I'm sliding that back in. And Pat, you are such a blessing. And she makes, I think she told me she made 85 cards this Christmas. I'm pretty sure. And that's amazing. And here we go. I'm going to show you the card making magic by Christina Griffiths. I'll leave the link. Love that. I used that. And let's just take a quick look over the project that this will be a giveaway. Of course, it'll be a giveaway. And I'm showing you, oh yeah, the bevels. Ooh, ooh. And blessings. And I had a blast. I wish I could give more things away. But with the postage here from Canada, sending it out to wherever I have to send, I think you can see the little warp there. But you know what? It dried just about seamless, so I was glad. And here's the matching scene, and everything hopefully comes together. And what I want to say here while I'm showing you everything, while I'm putting this in, if you want to enter to receive this, you know, uh, to have a chance to receive this, I'd just like to know your favorite cookie. Yeah, your favorite cookies. I love to bake, but I don't eat my own baking. I'm not a cookie fan. I'm not, uh, you know, a few things I make I do, you know, eat, of course. Otherwise, my family would think I was poisoning them if I never <laughs> ate what I baked. Yes, but what's your favorite cookie? Just leave me whatever it is, chocolate chip or whatever. And if you want to add who makes it the best, is it your nana, your grandma, your grandpa, your papa, your husband, your, um, you know, you, whoever. Just want to know what your favorite uh, cookie is. That would be lovely. And I want to make it easy for you. You don't have to write me, you know, the recipe. <laughs> oh, yes, if you want to enter, send me the recipe of your favorite cookies. I'm just kidding. Just your favorite cookies. Thank you for joining me for this almost hour and 45 minutes. You have blessed my soul immensely. And I want to thank each one of you. And I'm going to do another project for my 18,000 subscriber and I'll do a giveaway on that as well. This is just a giveaway for the 2019 uh, year. I'm so thankful to uh, be here <laughs> and join you and have a YouTube channel. It, it's such a blessing. You are a blessing. Please enjoy the pictures. You have yourself a blessed week, as I always tell you. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.